the update. Let's bring in Republican Congressman Jeb Hensarling of the great state of Texas. Am I right on that, Will Kane? That's right, the great one. <laughs> he is the chairman of the House Republican Conference, the vice chairman of the Financial Services Committee. Nice to see you, sir. Thanks for talking with us. 69,000. There's no way to spin that as any kind of a good number, certainly. Well, absolutely not. It's very disappointing, and it's just another confirmation that after three and a half years, the president's policies are still failing. Uh, after three and a half years, uh, we still have millions of Americans who are still either unemployed uh, or underemployed. Uh, Forty months now of 8% plus unemployment when the president told us if we passed his stimulus plan, it would never rise above 8%. But, you know, if the president's going to continue to threaten the single largest tax increase in the, in the history of America, uh, provide us with serial trillion dollar deficits, double the amount of regulations on small business uh, and entrepreneurs, and then go out and vilify success in the free enterprise system, this is what you get. How and so it's disappointing, but the president's policies continue to fail average working Americans. Unfortunately, many of them aren't working. Christine was t breaking down the government jobs for us and then private sector jobs, and she said 13,000 jobs in government lost, 82,000 private sector jobs gained. And so how much of this is, is a problem, really, of, of these S&P 500 companies that have moved overseas? Because when you look at their numbers of job growth, they're actually doing much better than we're doing here in the United States and for those companies overseas. Well, the question would be, why is anybody wanting to move jobs overseas? And that is because the president's policies uh, have failed and are helping send capital and sending jobs overseas. I mean, the bigger story is just to have a tread the water economy, you need 150,000 jobs just to keep pace uh, with new entrants. And, and, and we received less than half of that, and the trend line has been in the wrong direction. And as you probably know, the real story is even worse because if you look at the labor force partici uh, participation rate uh, that this monthly unemployment number is based upon, we've had millions just give up and leave the labor force. Right, Christine was just mentioning that a moment ago. But when you talk about why are jobs moving overseas and you say because this president, well, really, jobs have been moving overseas for decades now, right? I mean, this is not in the last three years suddenly jobs started picking up from S&P 500 companies moving overseas. Uh, it has been 20 plus years of jobs moving overseas because of uh, better opportunities, certainly, overseas. Well, again, I'm not saying that the president created the problem. What I am saying is he's made it worse. And it's less inviting for small business people and entrepreneurs to go out and create jobs when the president is, again, threatening a tax increase, 40 percent of which is going to fall on uh, small business income, uh, when he has practically doubled the number of regulations on our small businesses Congress. and our entrepreneurs. That all, uh, those policies help send jobs overseas. Congress, we need what, fundamental... What I'm, I'm, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. One of the striking things about this jobs report and, and several of the recent months has been that governments have been laying people off, that government hiring is, is, is that just states and localities, they don't have any money to hire people. One of the things you want to do is, you know, cut taxes and cut spending. Why do you want to see more layoffs of government employees when employment is going down in every, and when, when employment is such a problem? Well, number one, we've seen a huge, huge buildup, particularly of the federal workforce. What we need is to promote economic growth with fundamental tax reform. And then, frankly, there wouldn't necessarily have to be any layoffs. But you're not going to get fundamental, you're not going to get economic growth with this president's policies. And so again, what we saw for a long time under the Obama administration and under his stimulus program, which obviously has clearly failed, is we saw private sector jobs lose out uh, while he was increasing federal payrolls, whether they needed to be increased or not. The main challenge here is how do we get economic growth? How do we get Americans back to work? And we're not going to get it when the president is threatening to increase taxes on small businesses, when he's doubling the regulatory burden. Uh, you can't borrow and bail out our way to economic prosperity in this whole politics of division and envy where the president fundamentally attacks the free enterprise system. I mean, it's no wonder that businesses aren't going out and investing capital and creating new jobs. That has to change. The president's policies have failed. And that's why he's turned to the politics of division and envy. The American people have suffered, but we can do better. We know what we need to do. 
Congressman Jim Henson will be joining us this morning from Texas. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Still